Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello from Panama. I'm on my way to Paraguay in Argentina for an industrial hip conference. But I want to introduce our show this week. We had a film crew from Colombia come into our office and interview me and Dr. David Knox and uh, the Orange Crew from Bogota, Colombia. They're our guests this week. We're not going to have our hip news segment, but uh, just want to say hola from Panama. And uh, we will see you next week. Here is the Orange Crew working on a new documentary about him from Colombia. Bye-bye. I feel the force. Hey, welcome to Cannabis Common Sense. We have today a couple people from the film crew, uh, the Orange Crew, a group of people from Colombia that are making a video, a documentary about cannabis. We have Arturo Torres, who's been on the show years past. Uh, when did you come on, Arturo? What 2018. Years? 2018. Okay. And uh, Ivan Gonzalez. Welcome to the show, folks. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Nice My pleasure. So, you've come to the United States on a, a, a quest to produce a documentary about cannabis. Tell our audience about the documentary. Okay. So, this documentary, it's a documentary linked to a social project that Ivan is going to tell you later about it. And specifically, the documentary, it's a, an educational documentary. We are teaching the people, not only in Colombia, but in the whole world, what these guys know. I mean, the potential of cannabis in many uses, not only medical, but industrial, and, and a lot of positive uh, impacts that, that this plant can have in the world. So now we are uh, making a travel across California, Oregon, and Washington. And so we are documenting that the experience of growers, of patients, of doctors telling us the truth about cannabis. And the truth basically is that it's not a, it is not a dangerous substance. It is basically the safest substance um, that we can use for therapeutic um, things, purposes. That, purposes, right. So yeah, that's basically what the, docu the documentary is about. Um, we are the Orange Crew, this is a five-person crew that are traveling with us, and um, yeah, that's basically the documentary. So the Orange Crew is from the Bogota area in Colombia? We are all from Bogota, right. Mm -hmm. um, Jose, our director, he's from Cali, and the rest of us are from Bogota, and yeah, we have a social project that is really important, and, and I want you to introduce you about it, and that's the heart of everything that we are doing now. I mean, from this project, from this social project, um, this documentary came from. So it's really the heart, and Ivan yes. can tell us something about the social project. Um, well, I will do my best with my English, mm -hmm. so uh, I apologize it's for good. this. Um, uh, but well, uh, our, our social project wants to help people in need in Colombia. And we can find that in cannabis industry, uh, there is a place for these people. So we want to um, we want to get these people. We want to take these people for our project and involve these people in the project, making their lives better, um, increase uh, uh, their life, making um, some opportunities. some opportunities for these uh, people in need in Colombia. Mm -hmm. But now we want to link with the cannabis. 
because the cannabis language is the wellness. Mm -hmm. So we can bring the wellness for all these people as, as for us. Tell us about cannabis in Colombia and uh, uh, what is the, the scene or the market like there today? Um, well, right now, um, it's a right in Colombia. You have the right. It's your right. It's your right if you want to grow your own. You it's can grow legal. 20 plants. It's legal right now. You can grow 20 plants. Uh, but it's still illegal uh, in the commercial way. So it's not dispensary. It's not um, nobody can buy, nobody can sell. It's just to grow your own. Mm -hmm. in, in the market flower. But mm -hmm. now, now it's legal medically. And so there's many licenses that you can apply for um, in terms of cultivation, um, transformation of the product, and then distribution, mm -hmm. transport, and all of it, all of that. Um, what I want to mention about the legal situation of cannabis in Colombia is that um, most of the people in the industry is focusing in export cannabis, which is fine. Which and they're exporting to Canada primarily, is that I right? Think Canada yeah. and some countries in Europe also. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, cannabis has to travel around the world because it's a really powerful medicine and it's a benefit for a lot of people. But I think we have to start to focus on the patients because there's a lot of people, not only in Colombia but in the world, who, who's needing cannabis right now to treat a lot of diseases and, and situations. So, yeah, now the, the, the legal cannabis in Colombia is only for medical uses, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an important industry that it's growing, and we still have to work a lot in some politics and some, some things about the ways that it's gonna get to the patients, uh, but, but, but it's something good that, that it's, it's, it's growing really, I will say fast, but it could it could be faster. But but, but it's it's good. It's good what's happening in Colombia. If a patient wants to obtain a medical marijuana or use it or try it in Colombia, what do they have to do? Okay, that's 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 the the thing that that I want to work on. Um, there's already some clinics around the country, and. I know that some doctors are prescribing it now, like recommending cannabis. Mm -hmm. But um, still, we want to work on that. We want to work on the clinics. We want to, we 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 need to work on the distribution channels for the patients because it's it's, it's not really clear right now. And um, and so we we have to focus on that to get that channel ready for the patients to get it. Because yeah. How does it work right now? If they're not Some released. companies are producing products like tinctures and topicals and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, and do they sell it directly to the patients? Normally, or? yes. yes. Normally, see. the people oh, yes. go to find the, the, the company or the brand. Or they contact them and, and then they, they get the products like that. Mm -hmm. But I would love to see like dispensaries and stores and clinics like this. Mm -hmm. where the people can go get the information, learn about, get their products, and, and, and get um, a better life with it. Yeah, today you saw a number of patients come through our clinic here, yes. and uh, you got to interview Dr. Knox. What did you think about the interview with Dr. Knox? The most important thing about that interview was um, the positive things about the cannabis. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, he's a doctor, Mm -hmm. He has uh, the academic formation, mm -hmm. so what he told us, it's a, it's um, reality. He told us about, from from his experience, mm -hmm. with a lot of years of experience, mm -hmm. a lot of patients, a lot of patients. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, so all this conversation from his experience, it's very powerful for us, mm -hmm. because this is what we want to share with the people. Mm -hmm. All these cases, all these patients, mm -hmm. all this wellness, the people have to know. It would be good for other doctors yes, to hear some of that sure. information as well, so they could learn more about the endocannabinoid system. Yeah, definitely. I, need, I, I think in Colombia we have to promote and make a lot of educational things about cannabis. Mm -hmm. Because the patients 
they need to know how this works you know they need to know that it's a safer way to treat a lot of things without the bad side effects of some other medicines but the, the people have to know it the doctors have to get educated about it because mm -hmm. If not, no one is going to prescribe it and, and tell the people how to use it. And so, yeah, that's, that's why we got, to, we got the idea of, make, of to make this documentary, to, mm -hmm. to make like a, like a whole spectrum documentary about the uses of cannabis and the importance of it in the world. So in terms of hemp, is hemp being grown in... Colombia at all for fiber or food or, uh, or is it just medicinal I cannabis? I don't think so. I, I know yeah. about some people who's who's been working on that on the licensing and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, um, I, I can tell you that if if, if someone is doing it right now, but could be a really good conversation for the next years in Colombia mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because the the industrial hemp will be a really good product for our landscape. Mm -hmm. for our uh, for our environment for our weather for our high type of cities or mountains or whatever mm -hmm. we have uh, could be really good one a really good product mm -hmm. and in the other hand uh, another conversation that we need to to make the hemp um, as an option is what happened with the hemp a lot of people can can grow the hemp but now we need uh, an industry behind the hemp to get yeah. this to get this to buy the products yes to buy the, the products to far exactly that's been the exactly. biggest problem exactly. in Canada when they first legalized hemp here in the United States a lot of people grew it the first year but they didn't have a market they didn't most farmers when they grow a crop they knew who they're going to sell it to before they plant it in the ground but with hemp many people just jumped and some farmers lost a lot yeah. and some committed suicide even. And so, uh, uh, but in both Canada and the United States, at first it spiked and then it dropped and stayed down for about four or five years and then slowly built up as new markets developed. Yeah, well, I, I think, again, for, for this um, aspect, education, it's, it's vital because people have to know that we can make a lot of things from hemp right now. I mean, you, you just show us your collection of, of objects like, okay, paper, but also um, all the things for the food industry, mm -hmm. the package and, and everything can be made from hemp. Basically everything can be made from hemp, but, but we have to pass the word to the people. We right. have to teach about it, like that a lot of people is going to get interested into, into work on this and develop those industries and the politicians also, they're going to know the importance of this and the possibilities and the yeah all the, all the work that can be done with this and bring a let's say a, a push a new push to 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 get back our economy in especially in this era of pandemic and, and, mm -hmm. and all of it yeah so um how did you come to decide to do this this video how did you get involved in in cannabis what drew you to cannabis okay well i i knew you before because i have been living in the north area of california learning and working in cannabis farms and so i had a bunch of contacts around the whole coast mm -hmm. and when the project the social project were linked to the cannabis because our conversations and our ideas to, you know, to, to make um to make something good with it, mm -hmm. um, we decided to to document a trip along the whole West Coast, California, Oregon, and Washington State, to to see all the all this history because it's it's not something new here. You guys have been working on this since the 80s or 70s. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Uh, we haven't been on that battle that much time, um, but you guys have, have been on that. And so with all of this information of important people in the industry, in the history of cannabis here, we decided to record that and make a, a document to share with the world about all the potentials and all the benefits of cannabis. 
That's that's where the idea came came out. I see. So, what about you, Ivan? What is? Uh, well, for us, will be uh, sorry for us. What well, was the same? Mm -hmm. Actually, um, what we have in common is the plant. Mm -hmm. All of all of we we grow, mm -hmm. uh, we use. Mm -hmm. So we, you're able to grow your 20 plants and yes. use that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and how long has that been allowed in Colombia? Since mm. 86, with the Constitution of 86. 1986? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, basically, there was a gray space in the law when they were saying that more that, than 20 plants, it's a plantation, and so it's punishable. But they weren't saying nothing about what about the 20 plants? Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. what happens with more than 20? So that's where the, the home growers um, stay sticked with, with that law. Mm -hmm. and, but then in 2017, I think so, when the, yes. when the medical law passed, um, they made it clear about the autocultivo, which means home Self growing. Self-cultivation. Self yes. Self-cultivation. So in 2018, I think it, it got it, it was clear that um, all citizens of Colombia were allowed to grow up to 20 plants for personal use. Um, yeah. But you both had tried cannabis before that. When did you first learn about cannabis? Well, me? Was, yeah. Well, I was really curious and I was, since I was really young. I think the first time I smoked cannabis, I was like 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, since that, I got really, I, I got much more curious about. It. Mm -hmm. So I started to collect the seeds mm -hmm. that, from the buds inside, and just started to to try how how it came out if I throw a seed in, into some soil. And so I remember that I planted a seed in the front of my mother's house, mm -hmm. and so. This was a gorgeous plant. It just it just started to grow big and big and big, and I don't know why. Well, now did I, your mother now, know what that was? Yeah, she knew. Okay. Yeah, she knew, and I don't know why the plant was showing like some crazy colors. Mm -hmm. um, now I can I can think that it was something about the nutrients and and the soil, but. Um, well, yeah, one this, thing this, 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 about Colombia is the light cycle yeah. is always 12 hours a day. Yeah. So here, that means they automatically flower at 12 hours a day. And so, but a seed will vegetate a little bit. They, it won't, if you have a cutting, a cutting will immediately flower at 12 hours a day. But a seed will grow for a little while yeah. and be bigger. Yeah. So, yeah, so these plants started to grow and to grow and to grow. And then obviously my mother was, was asking me about the plant. And I just I just told her that some hippie in a market gave me the seeds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But really, I, I got the seeds from a pot that I was smoking. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I really got in love with the sensation, with the with the ritual of make some space to talk, to relax, to think about important things or the social interaction yeah, with your yeah. friends and fellow kids and also the music the music was a special thing mm -hmm. around it because every time when i was smoking weed we were playing music with our yeah. friends so that that was the moment for us to connect and make some music and and have a creative moment mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. i recognized like that and and i liked it a lot but i was also really interested into the plants it, into the plant itself mm -hmm. to grow it and to see how it grows uh, since the beginning, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Ivan, when well, did you first get it? For me, it was um, a little bit different. I tried it like two times in the past, and I um, was a really bad experience. Was okay. two times just, but but then uh, three years ago, I I saw a picture of a bot from the garden of from the Arturo's garden. Just one three of, years. Yes, ago. one of my friends posted a picture of the boat, um, and I saw that boat really beautiful, very, very, very different than all the cannabis that I I knew before. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw that boat, and I say, all right, th this is this is how boats looks on the internet. Mm -hmm. I want to know more. Can you introduce mm -hmm. me to this guy? Yeah, yes, for sure. And this is how we met. 
mm-hmm. for for um, for the cannabis. And after we met, um, I start to grow in, in my home and mm-hmm. an indoor. I just start an indoor. So had you been making? You're making a film now. Do you have a name of the film? It's going to be in Spanish, right? So. Yeah, there's um, a temporary name that we, yes. like we named the project as. It's the documentary 707. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, it's, still, it's still temporary. Uh, the documentary is 727, sorry. Yes. And yeah, but we're going to so see. So why 727? It's, um, it's, it's a magic number. Yeah, it's a that, magic number. That in, that, in that day, in the... 27th of July, mm-hmm. uh, this project came out, the idea of it. I see. So, and then we started to, to see the, the number on several places and stuff, so we, we said, okay, we're yeah. going to name the project as that. A lot of things, uh, our flags, our bags, our, a, lot of, a lot of things, uh, but they're really, um, really important things. Mm-hmm. That kind of things that all of we, we want to... We some was, signals. Yeah, some signals. We mm-hmm. was waiting for that. And it came with seven twenty. This, is, so this is the name you should you should use. Documentary seven twenty seven. Okay, and so, um, how did you have you ever made any films before, Eva? Um, when I was a kid, I used to work on television on uh-huh. Colombian television it's a for professional. Uh, yes, for um, I say yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, like a little actor for. Uh, Four or five years wow. uh-huh. on 2004, 2000, 2005. And tell us about the rest of your crew. There's three of you here that yeah. don't feel comfortable enough speaking English. Yes, yes. Or, um, okay, so. There is um, Jose, our uh, <laughs> director, uh-huh. cameraman. Uh, Angela, there is our uh, showrunner, the, the producer, one of the producer. Um, Kate. It's um, one of the manager of the social project too, mm-hmm. the La SOS Colombia, that is the name of the social project. Uh, yeah, there is the team. All right, so the five of you are traveling together. When did you first come on this trip to America? Today, as we're recording this, it's the 16th of November. And so... I got here on the 19th of October, but the guys came one month before. Well, uh, yeah, on 7th. Mm-hmm. Uh, September, September 7th. Okay, yes. and we, so we you started in California? Yes. yes. And so South what California. did you, what have you, I know you went to the 25th anniversary of the enactment of the first medical marijuana law yeah. that, that was uh, successful in the United States, Prop 215 yes. in California. I think you went to, to Dennis Perone's home, yeah. which is, he was the, the sponsor of Prop 215. Yes. And tell us about that. How it was on the that was amazing. That was amazing. We were sharing time with the with all the people involved with the proposition two fifteen that you said the, the first medical law in the United States. And that was really powerful for yes. us. It, 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 it inspired us a lot to meet these people, to see how they built the idea to get out with this proposition two fifteen and yeah, all the all the love and compassion that 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 was on that idea. Mm-hmm. So who you saw? I know Elvi Masika was yeah, there, and yeah, Ed yeah. Rosenthal. Ed Rosenthal. Yeah. Who, who else? Well, Did you interview Elvi and Ed? Um, not yet, but we're gonna we're gonna be with them. You know, Elvi is in Eugene most of the time, so yeah. maybe you'll catch her here in order. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but um, yeah, we went to visit Elvi and Ed Rosenthal, but we have. Um, Dale, Dale Sky Jones from oh, yeah. Oxford. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then we made an Bebos. interview with Bebo Strippet. She has been doing this longer than I have. Yes. Yeah. That was beautiful, the, the conversation that we had with her. I um, think I met her in 82. I was only like 21 or 22. Oh, was it? It was good. It was in San Francisco. And, and, and she was in Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Is that is the place? Yeah. Is the place? Yeah. So yeah, we got pebbles. We got pebbles. We got some of the real OGs of the whole legalization yeah. movement, mm-hmm. and we are really one of the OGs of it. So we're pretty honored to be here. 
Well, my pleasure as well. So you didn't just go to that in the, this month. Who Name some other okay, thing. Can yeah. you talk about some other we places you traveled or interviewed in the we past? The first stop we made was the, with the, the Sisters of the Valley. Yes, at Central mm -hmm. Valley. In Central Valley. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and talk about them. They grow medical marijuana. Oh, that's a beautiful project, yeah. Um, Sister Kate, that is the founder of the Sisters of the Valley, so yeah, she runs a farm. Um, they grow CBD plants, high mm -hmm. CBD plants, and they're making tinctures, salves, and some topical, topical stuff. Yeah. yeah, and uh, what I will highlight of of their work is that they take it in a in a in a really religious way. Mm -hmm. I mean, without being Catholic or, or any religion specific, like spirit, but yeah, really spiritual way. Mm -hmm. So they treat their plants really carefully. The environment in the farm is really calm and lovely, and everything is really carefully done. And um, yeah, it's, it, it's it's lovely how how they they produce their medicine. It's a beautiful point of view because it's more nice for approach. for the plant, for the medicine, for the cycle of the moon. It's more this than the business. It's not about the money. It's mm -hmm. more about the the wellness. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, we can feel this sharing time with the sister of the body. And so, and so yeah, yes. they have a really beautiful community. And um, now there's some sister of the body communities around the world mm -hmm. in, in so many countries that are, that yeah. are women who got inspired. At with them and decided to open their their own farm. And I've seen some in Jalisco, in Mexico. Yes, in Mexico. Mexico too. Yeah, there's several now. But yeah, it's, really, it's beautiful. And then we Ranchera. went to visit Ranchera. Ranchera Familia. Uh, it's a project founded by Ranchera, a girl that is called Sue. And um, she also works with CBD plants down in Fresno County and that, that's a beautiful project it's an outdoor project and she's making her own line of cbd products um like some beautiful pre-rolls and flower and she's also working with some other um companies or, or brands um mm -hmm. friends of her and yeah they have like a beautiful network of of, of really lovely people working around the plant uh, yeah, there, there was there was a nice visit with, yes. with Ranchera. Then we moved to we we moved up to the north mm -hmm. to Humboldt County, mm -hmm. and it started with uh, Wendy from Sonabis. Yes, Sonabis. Yes, right. We started from, from Wendy, Wendy from Sonabis. That was a really special stop for us because mm -hmm. Wendy is working on the regenerative regenerative farming mm -hmm. regenerative yes regenerative yeah. farming it's a hard work yeah <laughs> and so she was teaching us about the K the soil. And F techniques and taking care of the soil and taking dry care of the soil and the dry farming and yeah all the all the microbial life that we have to put into the soil again to 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 make that same sy symbiosis work mm -hmm. and so that was a beautiful stop with Wendy and yeah, that was uh, really yeah, nice. an uh, uh, interesting thing uh, from Wendy was we was there drinking um, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. She makes um, the fertilizer, the ferments of the K and F. Yes, and um, we was drinking there. So it's, it's the first time that I I know uh, a fertilizer that you can drink. Drink yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, was, that was amazing, yes. and basically it's because. They are natural ferments, you know about the sure. KNF, so, mm -hmm. so they are natural ferments from several ingredients and um, because it's so natural, you can drink them and it's going to benefit you too. But uh, yeah, that was special to, to know that <coughs> she's, she's taking care of using something in the plant that she could drink too. So yes. that's, that's a nice approach to a very natural way. And, yeah. Super healthy. Yes. Who else? Nice. Then we visited um, Sunshine. Sunshine from Sunbolt Farms. 
and she had a she have a dry farming farm and that was beautiful i didn't knew about that technique no and, and that's really nice and yeah that was beautiful the product from from that crop was was really nice really derpy and loud in, in terms of aromas and taste and yeah it comes out pretty pretty nice and so which means that the soil is pretty rich because the dry farming basically they're not feeding it with with nutrients external nutrients but only they're not even watering because the water it's it's below it's down below the ground so right and the deep taproot root of cannabis will reach down that's it. as deep as it is tall yeah to access the groundwater that's it so yeah it means that the soil have to be rich and yeah and you have to get water um, below it especially this past year with the big drought in california yeah they had to access a good source yeah. of deep water to yeah. be able yes. to grow it all but but that's beautiful that, that's a really good technique and method and that was with sunshine from some both farms and then then we move to sunshine and yeah, we went to Eureka to visit Laura Costa, yes. who's our host in Eureka. Um, and there we were, we was with uh, the people from Terplandia. Yeah, she introduced us to, mm. to Christy from Terplandia. At Eureka. Uh, some people in Humboldt that is working with uh, terpene extraction mm -hmm. um, from the fresh plants. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're basically harvesting the plants and put them directly into the into the system that is going to extract the terpenes mm -hmm. and so they're working on that on the terpene uh, industry yes. and it, it, it's really interesting to see to see that um yeah we've been all around and definitely laura has helped us with a lot of contacts and she's been open us the route to to visit some really important people and uh, Happy is that how you got to the 215? Yes. Yeah. Thing? Yes. Yeah. yeah. To the celebration of the 215. How we get to Dennis Brown's house? To mm -hmm. how we met with um, Pebbles mm -hmm. was because Laura. Yeah. And after Laura, were there other things that you've seen outside of those, or? Mm. Not yet. Okay. Not then yet. you came up here. Yes. Then, then we came here because we met each other in Mexico, right? In, a, yeah. in the conference, in the Expo, Expo Week in Mexico. Mexico. 28, 28, no, 20, 2016. 2016, maybe. right. And yeah. So yeah, we have we have some friends up here in Oregon and Seattle. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah, gonna we saw you in Expo Weed or Expo Medi Weed. Ah, yeah, we met in, in, uh, in Medellin. Yeah, in, that was like yeah. 2017. Yeah, I think. Uh, yes. yes, that was a in really good conference. Yeah, and 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 yeah, I really appreciate to see you traveling around the world because not too many people have have been so involved with the with the 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 need to go and take the information from the source. I mean, you traveled to China when you were what age? Um, I was like 25 when I first went to school in China. I see, you were so passionate. I started really. importing yes. hip uh, paper and cloth from China in uh, 88 is when I first got the first samples coming. That's beautiful. That's why I, I really love to see you traveling around the world and, and, and spreading the word about about cannabis. And yeah, it's really important yeah, it's for, really important for us. So thank you. So from here, where do you go next? Do you know? We're going to Seattle. Seattle. Okay. We're going to visit there some friends. Um, Will, that is a friend of us who have a lot of contacts there with, with a lot of companies. So yeah, we're gonna visit some indoor grows and labs and stuff like that. And then we're gonna head back to Southern Oregon, hopefully to to visit LB. LB and Eugene. Yes. Yeah. Maybe uh, to Emerald Cup. One of the legendary cannabis patients in, in, in California. And then we're going to head back to California. Yeah, and we won the Emerald Cup in December? We won. I mean, we, we're yeah, we going, won. Yeah. So do you have plans uh, when you go back to Colombia or uh, are you going to keep traveling just just in, in California? Uh, we'll have to oh. get back soon. Yeah, after, after uh, finish the project. 
-hmm. maybe on uh, January or February. Mm -hmm. We are come back to to uh, start the project with all with all these uh, research and mm -hmm. start the documentary edition too. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, we yeah. have to come back and we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. um, right now we can um, we can understand that in Colombia we are like you in '95. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for us it's like a, we are coming to the future to see what happened here and bring all this knowledge about the good things and the bad things. Um, bring all this knowledge with, with us and start a new conversation about cannabis in Colombia. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's a really good moment right now. It's a really good. Uh, it's a really special opportunity right now for the country and uh, we want to, to, to share this material, we want to educate a lot of people because we are close, we are close to, to get the things better there, so cool. it's the moment. I want to also invite the people to, to see our video, there's a video presentation of our project. Mm -hmm. And so Maybe we can run that on the show here, we'll yeah. just uh, awesome. run that uh, yeah. directly here. Beautiful. Toward the end of the show, yeah, link, and then you put the link of it, yeah, and yeah, we have a crowdfunding that we're using now to for the people to support our project. So we're gonna put it on the on on the screen too, and yeah, we on the way back to Colombia, we're gonna we're gonna finish building the project that is gonna help a lot of people. So these guys with the social project. Uh, that is called the SOS Colombia, La SOS Colombia. They started on the beginning of the pandemic, helping people in need, communities with serious need, and giving them um, food, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so they were calling from a community somewhere in Colombia. They were organizing the project with a company who was giving donations and stuff. They go for the food and they go deliver the food to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Now, uh, we want to, to take another approach with what's happening in Colombia and in the world with, with the pandemic. So we want to bring opportunities to, the, to these people in need and we want to train them into cannabis cultivation and all the works within the industry for then place them into legal jobs within the legal cannabis industry in Colombia. We want to make a network. So we invite a lot of uh, the people in, in the industry in Colombia who have companies with licenses and everything going on to get in touch with us to make a, um, a beautiful network of these companies to make a social project with a really big impact that is gonna help a lot of people and bring opportunities and tools to develop a, a life uh, during these these crazy times, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know back. Did you want to say? Ah, no, just um, it's it's about this. It's uh, the cannabis industry cannot forget the social responsibility about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, this is this is why we are here, basically. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the future holds for Colombia and cannabis? I know there's a peace treaty that ended a long civil war back in 2016, but it hasn't been fully followed by some groups. And so, uh, what yeah. do you th I know there's an upcoming presidential election. What does the political scene look like in Colombia? Maybe that's not something you, you address that often, but... The thing is, uh, right now it's nothing clear. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, right now it's... Uh, the division in, in the country it's uh, it's uh, evident we are we are uh, divided right mm -hmm. now for for that kind of um, mm -hmm. politics. Yeah, but as we are here in America, yes, you know we yes. we have our political issues here too. Yes. So, but uh, outside of the attack on our United States Capitol, there hasn't been a lot of extra violence, but in. Uh, Colombia, do you think there's hope with the next election? Do you think any uh, any uh, anything good will come of that? We hope so. Yeah, we hope so. But definitely, I think it's necessary to open a conversation to see what's happening with the people who have suffered from the war mm -hmm. during all of these years, and being here and and, and looking the experience of the yes. people with the medical cannabis 
for treating PSTD, mm -hmm. I'm seeing no one is thinking about the veterans in Colombia. No one is thinking about the military people who came out from the war. No one is thinking about the trauma of, of, of these people, of the guerrilla people also who moved out of the war. Mm -hmm. And all the families that were between these war zones. So many people died. So many yes. people. And so we have to address our attention into this and see that there's an opportunity in cannabis to treat this kind of trauma in a, in a, in a very um, proper way or, mm -hmm. or yeah, appropriate way um, without all the side effects of opioids and other medicines that could be, be used for this. And so we want to build, to start this conversation about what's happening inside the hearts and the mind of these people that has been affected by the war in Colombia. Mm -hmm. Because we can just, we, I think we can't move forward without solving this that happened already. Mm -hmm. So we have to, to help these people to see what's happening and, and to see the importance of, of including cannabis into these treatments and these lives that really need support. Mm -hmm. Is there any move for adult use legalization outside of just the 20 plants that each person, like, do you think that, how long will it take before dispensaries or, or marijuana stores there's start a, to open? There's an initiative right, right now in the Congress. Um, I don't really know too much about it. Uh, I know there's a, uh, a lawyer that have been working on this project and yeah, but I really have to yeah, get into it. There's a couple of projects, it. but um, in a really first uh, step, in a f first step mm -hmm. of the project. So right now it's nothing clear about it, mm -hmm. but it is start. Mm -hmm. So it's it's good. It's good for us. Yeah, anything to start. Yes. You know the way it works with social change. If you lose and you lose and you lose and you lose and you lose, and then you might want. Yeah, we, we'll see what yeah. happens with that, with that, um, with that law that they are trying to make. Um, yeah, but I, I definitely think that we have to open the discussions about cannabis clubs, cannabis dispensaries, or or any legal way that the people can have access to cannabis openly, yeah. Um, because yeah, we definitely need it mm -hmm. in Colombia. Yeah. So, I, as I told you, Arturo, I have just been uh, invited and, and accepted the invitation to come to Bogota on, uh, in early March for a botanical show where they're going to have live flowering cannabis plants. They claim to be the first to show different varieties of cannabis there. Well, that's well, nice. Um, I think that that's important for the people to, to see the sure. plant, right. the, the live yes. plants. Um, I so I hope to see you there. I'll, yeah, I'll be there. there. I think it's early March. I'll be there. Be there? Yeah. I'll be there. Yeah. yeah, but that's important for the people to, to um, just to don't be afraid of cannabis, to see that it's a plant it's a that plant. grows yeah. Yeah, yeah. Blood with some good soil and love and light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a good approach that the people who is not used to, to, to see the plants and see that it's a plant. It's, it's not something weird. It's a plant. So, if you are a medical patient in Colombia today, is it easy to access cannabis? Not, not so easy. No. I mean, there's companies that are producing already tinctures and topical stuff, and um, basically you have to contact them mm -hmm. to, to, to get products, but there's not many clinics and, and, and stores when the, where the people can go get them. And only products. Mm -hmm. You can uh, buy flour. Yeah, it's the, the oh. medical law didn't allow to, to sell any flower or buy any flower. Oh. That's weird, but I, I think it's about of the stigma around yes. it, that smoking is bad. But people have to understand that a lot of patients, they use it in the, in the, in the smoking way or vaporization way, and it's mm -hmm. really effective for them. So I think it's important to include the flower market into the medical Cannabis. cannabis access for patients but the industry that has sprung up to meet the export market is selling flowers to Canada that's and some the, European that's the problem. countries yeah that's yes, the problem that's so the problem to sell it to Canada you. 
I think the industry is focusing on exporting it, which is really fine. Mm -hmm. um, but we have to focus on the patients and the needs of the patients. And so, yeah, people need access. Mm -hmm. People re need real access and a safe access for the medicine. And that's why we need dispensaries, stores, clinics, and all of this. Mm -hmm. The people have to understand about the compassion, for example. Mm -hmm. How compassion works um, for a very um, difficult or um, severe or critical disease. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you start a conversation from the compassion about cannabis, about patients, could be, could be the way. Yeah. It's, it's not about it's not about have fun. It's not about um, get stolen. That's it. Right. It's, it's much more than this. The thing here in the United States, and I noticed in Mexico and in Chile and Argentina that has drawn the most compassion have been children with epilepsy, with seizure disorders that dramatically affect them, and so that has been kind of an opening door into looking at cannabis as medicine. Has there been any movement around kids like that in Colombia? Yes, yes. Um, basically that's where the the medical law started to, mm -hmm. to build up. Actually I remember a woman called Natalia Tangarife and she was the mother of a kid who had epilepsy I think so mm -hmm. and, and so her battle to, to get access to cannabis, um, it started a big discussion in the country about the medical cannabis. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she and, and, and some other mothers around the country, were uh, they started to, to show up and to, mm -hmm. to reclaim their, their right to get access to the medicine legally. Mm -hmm. And what did they say in terms of cannabis compared to other drugs that they were trying? The, the other drugs, in a lot of cases, I heard, aren't working. In, in cases, in many cases, they didn't work. And in other cases, they they produce some bad side effects. And so, well, this is bad that most of the people who who try cannabis in Colombia try it as the last option when they are dying. Yeah, it's not really um, bad um, And so, yeah, that that's how a lot of people in Colombia get to cannabis, but. Uh, that's why I, I think that we need to educate a lot of, of, of the people, especially doctors and, and the people in general, mm -hmm. um, because it, it, it don't have to be the last option, it have to be the first one because it's the safer. Yes, the safer. So, so yeah, we have to change that, and I think the point is by education. Mm -hmm. Has the situation in the United States with the changes in legalization here and in Canada and Uruguay, have those just impacted the discussion in Colombia? I think. I, I, I think yes. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, I think it, it, it always influences what happens around the world, the globe, and, and, and especially here about the discussions down there. And, and yeah, I think not only in Colombia, but everywhere even here in the United States, you know, one, one state to start to legalize medical and yes. another one and another, another one and then you see a bunch happening. of, uh, mm -hmm. basically the whole country legalizing me medical marijuana, but it's still illegal in the federal law, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I can see, I can see a lot of, not only Colombia, but now there's a, a, a proposal of medical marijuana in Brazil, in Peru, in Mexico. Um, yeah, so it's, it, I think it's a global thing that is happening and popping right now. Just uh, within the past year, uh, the World Health Organization has taken marijuana off of the schedule of drugs that have to be prohibited, with no medical access. So the United States and Mexico actually pushed to have this taken off. It was the United States that first pressure to have it put on. Yeah. There were some countries that fought to keep it illegal, like Russia and Saudi Arabia and China. They wanted to keep it illegal. I think because cannabis causes you to see through propaganda and makes you think more about those kind of control mechanisms. Yes. So those countries opposed it. But because the World Health Organization has made this change at the United Nations, 
this opens the door for the further change in laws. Many times here in the United States, we were told, well, we can't change it because of international law and these treaties that say you can't have medical marijuana. But now those treaties have changed. Yeah. And so it takes a long time for international law to come to the national law and the state laws and all of that. But it's a change that is starting to happen. I don't know if it happened because what happened here in, in Oregon and California mm -hmm. with you guys during the 80s and the, and the 90s. <clears throat> and, and so that's why it's so important this all this history that we are seeing here and documenting because that's why now the world is legalizing marijuana because you guys started here and put your voice loud and and and, um, and yeah ask for it for your rights to to grow to get access to cannabis to share it to yeah to to make it to educate like this show yes. you yeah. know this show has yeah. now been on for 25 years many people moved to Oregon because of this TV show This show, in fact, was, have you ever heard of TiVo? It's a video recording service. That yeah, was, yeah. So we were one of the top recorded programs on TiVo on a national basis for a number of years. I don't think TiVo even exists anymore. Okay. But uh, it's, it's made a difference. Education is a key. And so your, your documentary, our TV show, is still working together to do that. I'm, I'm missing the, the candle that you had with the candle. Oh, yeah. Well, we've still that's got that. Important. That's the hemp oil. The here. We call it our hemp flame of freedom. That's it. Yeah. Put it somewhere here. You're right. <laughs> You're right. I, well, you know, usually I don't do the whole interview here. Usually I'm here and the other person, like last week, was in Germany. A fellow from El Salvador, but he's a refugee mm -hmm. in Germany, mm -hmm. Martin Diaz. So, uh, and the week before that, I think we had a fellow on in the Czech Republic who has a magazine. Okay. And the government has prosecuted him because of the magazine for promoting drugs. So that, I looked at that as an important case for freedom wow. of speech and yes. press. So we don't usually have these days, like we used to until the pandemic, our guest directly here with us. We hope to go back to our studio again someday soon and we'll have everything set up a little bit better. Fortunately, we have a nice mural. But that's that's cool now, no? That that now you can you can share a, an interview or something with someone anywhere in the globe. Yeah, well that's that's the advantage is we do have generally a better set of guests because we don't have to have them in Portland at eight o'clock on Friday night. They can be anywhere, anytime. Just like we're recording this on a Tuesday. So it's uh, the difference between a live show. But we hope to have more interviews when we do get to go back to the studio as they lessen the restrictions on masks yeah, for sure. and things. So we're just about out of time. Is there anything, Yvonne, that you would like to say to our audience here in America in particular? Um, no, I don't want to put it in the We invite you to, to visit our link. Um, Paul is going to put the video on, on the program and we want to we want you to visit our link. There's all the information about the project. There's a big description of it. You're going to learn about it. You're going to learn about the ways to to support us and to help us. And there's the the crowdfunding thing on the link. And so, yeah, we invite the people to, to join our, our mission and help us to keep in doing this. And so please check the link, check the, the video. It's a beautiful video. And so we hope everyone gets, gets there. So we'll be running that video now. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, the last thing is um, make activists possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The people, I don't know, the people are seeing this yeah. uh, video from everywhere. Um, make activists in their places. Yeah, and you know, it is uh, important for us all to make those changes as best we can. And hemp can be so beneficial for the variety, the environment. So, well, I want to thank you for coming on again. Thank you, Paul. Oh, thank Yvonne, you, Paul. Arturo, thank you thanks for your work. And uh, uh, follow their their Instagram account. It's theorange.crew. And do you have any other website set up yet outside of that? Um, no, yes. Okay. Well, we'll uh, see you soon.
Yeah, it's another Instagram. Uh -huh. uh, how you... It's at La S O S Colombia. L A S O S Colombia. With O, not Colombia, but Colombia. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. <laughs> that's... I, here in Oregon, we have the Columbia River, <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. we spell it with C O L U, yeah. where the country is C O L O. Yeah. Sometimes I'll spell the country right. And my spell check will change it to the river, you know, and people just misspelled <laughs> Colombia. Well, it was the spell check. Yeah, so go, go check our link on our, our Instagram profile of the Orange Crew. There's some really cool clips about the people uh, that we have visited during this trip. Some short clips that show the, you know, the, the, the environment of their life, of their farming. And it's beautiful, so, so we, we invite you to check it out. And La SOS Colombia, it's the social project um, linked to this documentary. So also go and check it out. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. And, and thank you, viewers. Uh, we'll be back next week. And remember to work to help to restore hemp. That's it. Thank you, Paul. Thank, thank you, Paul. Thanks. My pleasure. Sour. La energía de este proyecto está en la gente, las manos y la tierra. Lo poderoso de este proyecto es reconectar a la gente con la tierra. Para mí el valor principal de este proyecto es inspirar a mucha gente la potencia, la conciencia y la infinidad de posibilidades para aplicar en una industria sostenible como lo es la industria del cannabis medicinal. Vamos a tocar un tema muy actual y lo vamos a contar de una forma como hasta este momento no se ha hecho. Este proyecto representa oportunidad. Es el momento en el que todos los involucrados vamos a tener la posibilidad de hablar de lo que nos apasiona, de hacer lo que más nos gusta y escoger la forma específica en que queremos mostrar. La fuerza de este proyecto está en el propósito en sí, un propósito social de empatía. Ustedes se van a enamorar de las historias, la conexión que hay entre ellas, la magia. Este es un recorrido por California con mucho rock and roll.